everybody and welcome to a brand new video on the Tarda Zone. If you like what I have to say, please give the video a like. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. So, 13, oh, Doctor Who ranking all 13 doctors from worst to best. And this is on, what's the name of the site? What's the name of the site? What Culture. So let's see who they, ha who they um, have put in, in the ranks. So, Doctor Who has changed and evolution ingrained in its DNA, a trait that is both one of its biggest selling points as well as the most foremost point of contention amongst fans. Whenever the show gets a major refresh in the form of a brand new Doctor, it's, it's exciting to see how the latest actor to play the Time Lord will fare in the role. But at the same time, it's sad to see uh, a great Doctor pass the torch and leave the TARDIS behind. Despite the heartbreak that the Doctor's regeneration can bring, one of the reasons the show has been able to survive over 50 years when so many others have come and gone in a fraction of that time is because it's able to grow, adapt and change. Why have they got a big bleed now? I hate the way they give you a big outcome. We don't just have the bloody countdown. But anyway, Doctor Who simply wouldn't be Doctor Who without a different actor portraying the main character every couple of years but that doesn't mean we have to like each incarnation every doctor who fan has its favorite and least favorites and one of the 13 main faces we've seen so far so some so, bleh, so some definitely stand out above the rest right let's see who they have and see do i agree right So, <laughs> I can't believe this. At number 13, according to What Culture's own um, ranking, Jodie Whittaker. <laughs> ah, Jodie Whittaker is last. I can't believe it. Ah, surprise, surprise, Jodie Whittaker fans. A media fucking outlet that actually tells the truth. 13. Right, let's see what they say, the reason for her to, uh, being last on the list. At this stage, it's hard to, it's hard to judge where Jodie Whittaker will fall in Doctor Who Hall of Fame, since we don't have the complete picture of her tenure. Well, I suppose that is a, a valid point. Um, but I, uh, yeah, it is a valid point, actually. I can't deny that. Uh, some Doctors have had a poor fourth season, but they redeem themselves. Oh, they're actually calling her... Do you know what? What what culture? Fair play to you. They're actually saying it out straight. It was a poor season. Are you listening, Jodie Whittaker fans? A media outlet that actually tells the truth. This is brilliant. But redeeming themselves further in the area. So by the time she regenerates, Thorntine could end up with a much higher spot in the rankings. That could be true. But at the moment, she deserves to be where she is. Right, let's see who they have. Um, as number 12. Ah, no surprise either. Actually, this is nearly identical to my list so far. At number 12 is the sixth Doctor, Colin Baker. Let's see. With quite, pos uh, po uh, with quite possibly the worst fashion sense in the, the entire history of the show, Colin Baker's sixth Doctor looks like a bad cosplay of himself. With such a bright and co colourful costume, you might think that this Doctor would be incredibly easy to like. But Baker's incarnation was surprisingly arrogant and self-absorbed to the point of being off-putting. The poor reception of his era resulted in BBC let him go... Uh, I said that wrong. Why do I always read sentences as... Uh, weird. Uh, the poor reception to his era resulted... In him being let go by the BBC, the only Doctor Who star to suffer such a fate. Woo! And he didn't even get his own regeneration. Well, nobody gives a crap. And the fact that he supports Jodie Whittaker, he deserves to be there. He only did that so he wouldn't be the worst Doctor in Doctor Who. Ah, now I disagree with this. Number 11. The fourth Doctor. They taking the piss. He was the one that started it all. Right, let's see what they say, right? Yeah, we have to give them a fair chance because they did put Jodie Whittaker last on the list. 
Doctor Who might not be around today had William Hartnell not played or helped make the show's early years such a success. And for that, we shall forever be in his debt. But the bad thing about him being the, the being the forced incarnation is that every doctor, every actor who came afterwards, had has had his opportunity to re refine and improve upon the character. And for that reason, the fourth doctor lacks depth, which come to expect from the character. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I don't know. I don't agree with that. Like, but like you know, you have your opinion. Again, I don't know. Peter Davis in number 10. Get away. At the time, Peter Davis was the, was the youngest actor to take on the role. So anybody that was complaining about Matt Smith, you haven't got a clue because he was the youngest at one stage. And this was reflected in his raw likability of his incarnation. And while that makes his era a fun one to watch, there is a persistent feeling that his stories aren't as dramatic as they should be. Almost like the decision to scale back the Doctor's age meant that the show's age had to be scaled back with it. Okay. But I would say the Caves of Androzani, I mean, come on, that was kind of a, a dark one, a weird one. And he also had the earth shock, he let a companion die. Come on. See, I'm not liking this list now. This list is annoying me now. Number nine, the third doctor. And they take, come on. Him and Tom Baker are nearly did. You know what? Ah, oh, no. I don't. Right. The, P the Perjury year begins with one of the most notable changes in the show's history. No longer was the Doctor parading across time and space, but instead he was stuck on Earth working as a scientific advisor to UNIT. That's why I love these episodes. While stranded, the Doctor on Earth was done for budget reasons and not story reasons. It ultimately felt like an, an inspired decision because it allowed Petrie's, uh, Petrie's uh, I can never say his fucking second name properly, I, I apologise to doctor, please, I still love you. Uh, Petrie's decision strengths to shine, well spoken, with a suave dress sense, this doctor felt a bit more human than his predecessors, which made him a great fit for the high amount of Earth-centric stories. It was actually great, man. I like his era a lot. I've actually got most of his DVDs there. Um, the ones that I've been able to get my hands on. Um, I love his stories. Inferno. Inferno is probably one of his best stories. I love Inferno personally now myself. I think it's great. Right, let's see. At number eight, the ninth doctor. At number eight, the ninth doctor. Well, he did have only one series. I can understand that to a certain extent. Uh, when he brought Doctor Who back in 2005, head writer Russell T. Davis had to modernise both the overall tone of the show as well as the lead actor. To, the, uh, to that end, Christopher Eccleston was an uh, incredibly pa pally, uh, fun, cool doctor and effect his leather jacket helped him achieve the sort of guy you would imagine having a few points down the pub with. Okay. I do remember though that uh, his costume... Uh, wasn't well received by uh, Whovians. Um, they did. They thought it wasn't Doctor Who enough, and I actually agree. But I mean, it did sue his Doctor, and I still like his Doctor. Number seven, the eighth Doctor, Paul McGann. See, this is where I have a problem, right? No. Paul McGann is a good doctor, right? And I know he's done big finish and he he's incredible big finish and all and but he's done a movie and he's done a webby sword, right? Does that justify his seventh place in the list? I I I I, I don't think so. Is he be, is he better does he deserve to be higher than Christopher Eccleston? Even the great Bill Hartnell? See, I, 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 this list is a bit weird. But see, this is what happens when you have a modern fan base then. You get all these uh, idiots that end up ruining polls because he'd be, he'd be lower down on the list. He is a good doctor. 
I think he should have got his own spin-off show. But he's only made two appearances, and I'm sorry, but I don't agree with this. Despite only having two on-screen appearances to his name. There you go. A TV movie and a short prequel to the 50th special. Paul McGann has managed to make a huge splash within the Doctor Who fan base. Yeah, I do agree. He has, but, I mean, it doesn't justify <laughs> being that high. I'm sorry, but I like him and all, but he doesn't deserve to be that high. He's not better than her three. No way. Uh, the seventh Doctor, Sylvester McCoy, is at number six on this list. <clears throat> He's actually a lot lower on my list. Uh, with his large hat, colourful pattern sweater and umbrella with a red question mark shaped handle, the Seventh Doctor was a very humorous, cartoony figure. In fact, at certain points during his run, it almost felt like a laugh track could be running over the top of the episode. Such was the jokey sitcom-esque flavour that permitted many situations the character found himself in. Uh this style of Doctor obviously won't be to everybody's taste, especially those accustomed to more serious, mature tone of the revived series. But looking back now, McCoy's Doctor is a refreshing change of pace, free of doom and gloom, and pole face heroism found inside most other eras. I have to say, like, before it actually got cancelled, he was starting to get some juicy stories. It's just a shame he never, but again, he did well in Big Finish. So... Yeah, but he'd be lower down on my list. Which, I do have my list somewhere. I just threw it away in a tantrum one night. Uh, long story. Uh, so the fifth place doctor is the second doctor, Pat Tremont. Doctor Who's Force Regeneration was the biggest test of the show had ever endured. There was no guarantees that completely switching out the lead actor would prove a fruitful one. But now all these years later, it was, it clearly was. And that was because Troughton brought something fresh to the role. By going from the first Doctor's grumpy grandfather to the second Doctor's perkiness and fun-loving attitude. This version set the standard for the ar archipel Doctor. What the feck is that word? That most audiences end to identify with today. Brave, wise, ruthless when necessary, but played playful and kind. I do like Pat Trouton's uh his era I think has suffered the most from the 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 last uh the last episodes, hasn't it? I think his uh, era suffers the most, which is quite sad really because yeah. Uh, the Macro Terror has been animated and that's coming out soon. That's one of his stories. But if it's anything like The Power of the Daleks, which I've seen the animation of that, the animation is absolutely horrible. I hope they've actually improved the animation for The Macro Terror because um, I think BBC are actually should be ashamed of themselves. They know there's such a, there's, there's, there's a demand for these episodes these lost episodes right and they won't even put these in animation to them and if they did that you know what i mean like they know that this stuff is going to sell anyway but i think they should be a bit i mean doctor who has made the millions you think they'd actually start um making decent dvds especially animated ones right the 10th doctor is fourth place in this list and that won't that won't that won't uh that won't make the wife happy the wife is a huge David Tennant fan. Number four in this list. Uh, if Christopher Eccleston successfully uh, spearhead, uh, if Christopher Eccleston successfully uh, sheep herded in the modern era of Doctor Who again with these fucking weird words, will you just bloody use normal English? Then David Tennant took it to the stars. Literally, still an insanely popular Doctor almost a decade after his regeneration, the 10th Doctor's cocky charm and devilish good looks helped bring a lot more younger viewers on board with the show. God help us all when that happened. But I do love David Tennant, I have to say. He's not, you know, sometimes I keep saying it to the wife, she doesn't like me saying this, but I think he overacted in some episodes. But he did have his highlights, Midnight for me, Blink was another one. Well, he wasn't in Blink that much, but... 
Uh, actually, and leave forget about Blink. I don't even know why I brought that up. That's actually a ridiculous episode to bring up because he wasn't in it that much. Uh, but Midnight is definitely a highlight for me, and Silence in the Library and Forest of the Dead are definitely um up there as well. And he did have probably one of the best air, uh, best air, uh, seasons in series four, in my opinion. Um, it was a good era. Um, yeah. So yeah, but. The wife won't like that, that he's fought. Oh, of course, he did The Waters of Mars as well, which is an excellent episode. I I think that's one of these, yeah. Waters of Mars is definitely one of his best episodes too. Love it. Number three. Now, I disagree with this, but I'm actually glad he's this high up on the list because this doctor has suffered a lot of um, hate. From younger fans especially. Uh, for fans who clearly don't know what Doctor Who is about. Because I remember when he was uh, named as the Doctor. There was a lot of people saying he was too old to play the role. Which clearly shows that half of this fan base don't actually realise that Doctor Who has a history before 2005. And should actually go back and watch the show. And they'll see that there was actually a lot of old actors that played the Doctor. Right. The Number three. My favourite Doctor of the New Who era. Peter Capaldi. I love this man. Do you know what? I hated his regeneration scene. Right? But I was gutted when he was gone. And if anybody has, ha hasn't heard the interview of him. Where he's talking to Joe. Uh, what's her name? I think it's uh, is it Joe Wiley. The DJ. And he's talking about leaving Doctor Who. And he gets highly emotional in that interview. That doesn't make you cry. There's something wrong with you. The jump from Matt Smith. See, the, he did follow. Peter did had, had a daunting task anyway. Because a lot of the fan girls were, were hearts were broken when Matt Smith left. So he was never going to um, get the best start. And the fact that he's uh, very fourth season, which is my very which is my favourite actually. Right? A lot of people say well, Serious 8, they didn't know which direction they wanted to go with the Doctor's character. They actually did, right? They wanted to make the Doctor darker. They wanted to make his episodes darker. But what happened was, is that only the people that were die-hard Doctor Who fans loved it, right? The, the general fan base didn't like it. They liked the way it was before with David Tennant and Matt Smith. They, they, they wanted the humour. but See, this is why Peter suffers then. Because then in, in season 9 and then um, season 9 and 10, then they try to basically give him a bit of humour. And it worked sometimes and they gave him a few gimmicks. But that's why his, uh, and the stories as well, his era was completely flawed. But I mean... He's higher up on my list anyway, but I, I, it's just his acting ability. To me, if we hadn't had him, Doctor Who would be finished. Because I wouldn't have survived after. If I Just put it this way, after Matt Smith left, it, it, it was lucky that we got Peter. Because if I had been any other actor, I'm being honest with you, with the stories that Peter received, if I had been any other actor, we wouldn't have Jodie Whittaker right now. Because Doctor Who would probably be, it, it'd probably be put on a break. So the jump from Matt Smith to Peter Capaldi was the one of the show's biggest. Uh, uh, was was the one who writes these articles. The jump from Ma Matt Smith to Peter Capaldi was one of the biggest the show has ever gone through. Switching from an, an energetic young man to a stern or colder figure at the end of two two thousand and thirteen. This huge change was likely the reason that the 12th Doctor's ratings dipped as low as it did. There you go. After three young dashing Doctors in a row being presented with a character that was more in line in Hart Hartnell's grouchiness was the change that the general audience struggled to adapt to it too. And that's true. But at the end of the day, forget about the other audience. You think about the Doctor Who fans that kept the show going for all these years. This is what I hate now. This is what Doctor Who... Oh, we got the panda to everybody else. He's too stern, so let's make him funny. Even though the guy is not naturally bleeding funny. 
I'm, I'm still so pissed off with Peter's era because we got one of the greatest actors and I don't care what anybody said. And I'm sick of people comparing him to Winogar, right? Look, at the, look, I said it already and I'm going to say it again. Winogar is not good enough to polish his boots. Jesus Christ, her acting is so bad. That's why she's last on this list. She's last on my list. Wow. So, if number two is the fourth doctor, holy shit, that means, right. So, it's no surprise, I disagree with this, actually. Uh, Tom Baker should be top of any Doctor Who poll. I don't care what anybody says. Actually, Actually, what am I saying? The fan base agree with me. Because every other poll that there ever has been before 2005 has always had Tom Baker on top of the poll. Right? Then when the show came back, Tom Baker was still winning. But because we have Miss Whitaker now, all these polls change. Right, so what do they say? It's no surprise that the longest serving doctor in the show's history is one of its most beloved because Tom Baker had seven years and seven series to leave his stamp. He played the character for a long time and as such, the fourth doctor might be the most iconic of them all. So why isn't he top of the list? Which means... Da -da -da -da! The eleventh doctor... Matt Smith is number one. Wow. Now, I love Matt Smith, right? I actually like him better than David Tennant, right? Because I think taking over after Tennant was going to be a huge, a huge task. And any fan of David Tennant will tell you that, that taking over from David Tennant was always going to be huge, right? Now... I remember the regeneration scene and I remember when he was on the third and he said Geronimo and all, people weren't liking it. I actually remember, there was actually people were annoyed. They said, who was this guy taking over? Blah, blah, blah. And the same thing that they said about uh, Peter being too old. They said that Matt was too young to play the role of the Doctor. Again, not knowing that there's a history before 2005. Because that's the kind of thing we're dealing with now. But the 11th hour. The 11th hour for me. Right. If you look at that. You look at that episode. Right. By the end of that episode. Matt Smith. Had convinced everybody. He was the doctor. And. While he's number one on this list. He was high up on my list. After it. it the right again, his era was flawed, but it wasn't as flawed as Peter's. Uh, Stephen Moffat did go crazy within Matt Smith's era. Um, the whole Clara story, it's a Clara uh, a story arc, which I still don't like to this day. We won't get into that, but um, well, let's see what they say. So, after the immense popula uh, popularity of the tenant era, there was an enormous amount of pressure on young Matt Smith's shoulders. It would have been so easy to buckle under the weight of pre of high audience expectations, but rose to the occasion with then new showrunner Stephen Moffat's clever witty writing <laughs> and I, I laugh because because they still call it clever and witty. <laughs> Smith's odd ball of lore resulted in a grand fairy tale adventure. See grand fairy tale adventure. See this is where Moffat started to go wrong though. Because Doctor Who is a sci-fi show, right? It's not a fucking fairy tale fucking adventure yoke, right? It's a sci-fi show. We want sci-fi, yeah? Chris Chibnall, are you listening? So we had the vampires of uh, Venice. Yeah. What else did he have? Yeah, he had that stupid... Um, the Day of the Doctor. Ooh, he's just saying, oh, that stupid day of the doctor. That's the 50th. I'm not a big fan of the 50th. I don't like that whole scene where he's hanging out at the tar. This just looks all ridiculous. It's not, it's not, it's not great. And the reason why I'm, I'm a bit annoyed as well is that, you know, it was nice to see Tom Baker back. But look, 
we they've been asking the guy to come back for years and then all of a sudden he decides to come back and then all the other doctors don't get a chance and I think Paul McGann again should have been in it. I really do. Um I know Christopher Eccleston didn't want to come back for it. That's fine, fair enough. You know what I mean? Uh, he has his reasons. Like Tom had his reasons back then, but like if you're gonna bring Tom Baker back, you should have brought back all the other doctors. That's the way I look at it. Uh, but Matt Smith is number one in this, so what culture, I don't know what kind of drugs you're on, but it should be Tom Baker, maybe Peter Capaldi, and then Matt Smith, that'd be my first three. That'd be my top three. And yeah, the, uh, the, you know, because Peter's area is flawed, that's why he's not number one. Tom Baker had the better stories, I have to be honest, but Peter is the better actor. But there you go, so that's their, um, that's an interesting list. So do you agree with our list? Do you, uh, what, where would you place all doctors in your list? Leave down in the comments. Um, this was fun. Something nice for a change, you know. Don't want everybody thinking that I'm a grumpy old man. You know, I might, I might be a grumpy old man, but who gives a damn? Right, folks. So that's the end of that video. So, as I said, uh, if you like what I've, I've had to say, please give the video a like. And tell, tell me who your top five doctors are. Or top three or whatever. Or tell me who's last on your list. Um, most of my subscribers I already know who's going to be last on your list um, but yeah uh, let me know and it would be interesting have a good day and uh, stay safe I'm off now to watch the, um, the Republic of Ireland kick some Gibraltar ass is it Gibraltar? have we got Gibraltar today or is it Georgia? doesn't matter one of those little uh, minnows we're going to beat them anyway so see you later